Hello everyone, it's the Tug Attic from the dock. We're here today to show you how to take a triple tail off the backbone, the filet meat. My buddy called me today, John Adams, he caught three nice triple tails yesterday and he kept his alive and his live well the same as I do and uh, he got a little tired when he got back and usually we don't clean them the same day. So if they're still alive, we keep them alive. We always like to have them as fresh as possible. He wants to have it fresh and on the grill tonight and he wants me to leave the scales on it, take it off the backbone and get him back as much meat as possible. The name of the game on these videos is not how fast we can do it, but what the maximum return is after we clean our fish. That's what we're striving for here. Remember, don't just do it, do it right. All right, everybody, as you can see, we just got this out of the cooler here, and uh, it's still kicking. My good buddy John caught him this one yesterday. He's about an eight pound. Uh, triple tail, really pretty fish. This is one of three that they caught yesterday. We're going to go ahead and fillet this with the scales on and do like we did earlier with uh, one of our redfish videos and show you how to skin it without having to go through the whole scaling process. And to my estimation, this is one of the finest eating fish going right here. This triple tail tastes to me like lobster. It's gorgeous. All right, well, let's start it. Now, now again, we're using our Dexter 3576. It's got a lot of backbone and, and, and heft to it. So what we're going to do here John wants to take this one and smoke it. So we're going to take it, getting as much meat bat as possible. Come up behind, there's a little fin right here. We're going to clip it this way. We're going to turn it over. Come back, catch it behind that little fin again. As you can see, this knife right here has got the extra backbone to it to get find that notch and cut through it. Well, you couldn't do it with one of those little skinny Filet knives that you see that people buy, they want to bend and break on you. Alright. And we're going to come back, turn the fish up, stick the knife in, you got backbone again with that curved edge, come on around. You can cut right on through. There's a little female, she got a row in her. One good thing about these knives, you got that circle that part of that blade allows you to really cut better than those little pointed thin fillet knives they sell. They say fillet knives, it's actually a knife that we use for skinning. Alright, once you get it cleaned out to that point, We'll come back and wash it out. He said you can smoke this gun. I'm going to grill it. Grill it. But you want to go ahead and skin it. Yeah, I'm going to put it on top of the tin foil. Okay. And so I can puddle up some olive oil and butter. Okay, we're going to turn it over like we did on our other fish, this fish being so fresh and slimy. I'm going to stick this towel back down like we do, keep it from sliding around on us as much. Start again like we showed you earlier. When I had that red video, come right along using that curved edge of the knife again. Keeping our finger on the blade becomes an extension of the nerve. You won't do that one with those little skinny knives. As we get that part done, we turn it back around, put the pressure down with our left hand, come in close to the dorsal fin. We want all the meat we can possibly get back. It's not about speed with an electric knife, it's about your meat return. You want a good thick fillet like that. As you can see, we'll throw that thing away, but we won't be throwing any meat away with it. Come around on the other side. It's a little different on these fish. You're going to leave that fin on that I usually take off when I fillet trout and bass and other things. We're going to cut on top of that a little ways and then we're going to come back through the other side and kind of meet up. Because that fin really runs up in there deep. You can see how far that bone goes up in there. 
it's a little more difficult to work with. You flip it over again, it's acting like we're kind of laying a flounder at this point. Put a little pressure down the left hand, come in again. Now we apply pressure with that left hand for two reasons. Number one, we want to get it down close. But if you notice this dorsal fin, it connects to the backbone. And you see that break where these little bones are right here? You want those bones to interlock like this. And when they interlock, when you apply pressure with your left hand, then you can make the knife blade just ride right over them. And you won't get up underneath them when you're cutting. Be careful when you cut with these things. Don't go too fast and jam because these have very sharp points right here on this dorsal fin. You can stick it in the knuckle of your hand in a heartbeat. Now on trout and reds and all, a lot of times you can take it up and you can just press down to cut it. But this is an easier way to do it. Flip it over, take this knife again, just tap it until you go all the way through. And that's a backbone that we like to show. We don't throw ours over and flip it to one side like these guys do with the electric knife. We show you there's nothing but bones there. That's a pretty piece of fillet. Okay, everybody, now we've, uh, we've rinsed them down, rinsed them out. And, uh, John, you sure you want to keep them like this or you want to do one and one? I want to do one and one. Okay, all right. We're going to come back, take this fin off. And, again, we want to take on this particular one get all the meat back. We're going to lay this down. We're going to grab this big fin. We're going to start on one side, and we're just going to keep rolling it and rolling it and rolling. This one whole bone is going to come out of here, and we won't have to worry about that. We go to eat it later. That'll be out of the way. And this one right here, I'll leave the scales on this particular one. And we turn this around. We take our knife, and we turn the edge up. We come between the, the flesh and the tip of those bones. Now, these are even more deep-seated than the bass. This is more like a rockfish or a freshwater bass. They go real deep. But if you take this knife with this curved edge again, you got more surface to work with, and you just, you just rub up against it, and just work yourself all the way to the tip. And you can see right there are those bones. Then you come back on this other side, and you kind of want to just scrape flat almost, because you want to leave as much meat as possible. That's the name of the game here. We want to save as much meat as we can. Once we get it to that point, we come back, we use our thumb and our knife as a pair of pliers, and then we pull them out. As you can see, all the tips of those bones is what we removed. Now, we're going to come back here on the high side, which in every fish like this has them. We've got five or six little bones that run along here. We're going to come on both sides of it. We're going to pull that up. Now, when John goes to smoke this piece with the scales on it, all he'll have is that large collarbone in there. That's a lot of sweet meat in there for him to eat around. That's a really nice way to smoke it with that uh, scale still on. It'll keep it from drying out as much. All right, now we're going to work on the other side. We'll come back and do the same thing. We'll take that back fend off. That's all right. That's all right. It's okay. That will go right here. All right, let's go. All right, we'll take this side now. We'll do the same thing. We'll come back here. We'll roll this bone out, just like we did on the other one. Knock that whole big old chunk of bone out of there. All right, now this one. Now, uh, John, you want to lead that collar bone and I try to scale it out? Take it off. Take it off, all right, 100%, okay? We'll come back now. Still going to try to give them back as much meat as we can. We're going to roll this out. Now that's a lot of good meat in the stew beef in there, but he wants to get all the scales off and all the flesh out so he can eat it like a banana. <laughs> He's got the grandkids coming over. <laughs> this takes a little more patience with these triple tail because it's, it's a pretty tough bone. Come back down on the other side again, like I said. Lay your knife as flat as possible. There we go again. See all the tips of those bones? They're out of there. Now you have one more bone that's back in here that we need to take out. It was stuck up in there with that collar bone. That's in every fish too. Okay. Now we're going to skin it. Boy, that's some pretty meat, isn't it? 
shad boning knife we use here is our skinning knife. Everybody else calls it a fillet knife. It's an eight inch bladed knife. We take our little tool with our bottle cap, put it down on the tail, start back on the end. That gives us something to hold on to. The whole name of the game again is get all the meat we possibly can back. Once you get it to that point, you get something to grab onto. You kind of want to hold it and rock it back in a seesaw motion. Now, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now, that's, that's a piece of just nothing but skin. Any meat left on that. Crabs don't have anything to eat on that one. And that's a nice, pretty thick piece of filet right there. Thanks for watching us clean this triple tail today, ladies and gentlemen. And please, hit the like button. Tell your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. And the Tug Addicts reminding you again, go fishing.